is Sam and today I'm going to show you how to build a DIY hand washing station using simple, easily accessible materials. Throughout this video, we will be dry fitting all of our components and we recommend that you do the same. This means nothing will be glued together until the very end so we can fully build, test, and address any potential issues while everything can still be adjusted. Once you have made certain that everything is working properly, you can proceed to the final glue up with the necessary adhesives. stability as well as a closed seal so the clean water stays clean. Um, I'm going to cut the hole and I would use two hands or else you're going to lose the gun because it'll yank your ball. Okay. Cool. I'm going to take this apart because we're going to put it into the lid now. There's two washers on here so make sure to have one on the top and one on the bottom. Just pop it through. Washer goes here. You just make it as tight as you can. Because, like I said, we want it to be a tight seal, not only to keep the water clean, but to provide stability for the PVC pipe. So, I'm going to attach these to the top and the bottom. Um, these are three quarter to half inch male pipe adapters and before you install them I would recommend putting some plumber's tape around it just for a tighter seal so water doesn't get through and you just want to go a few times around it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't need scissors you can just rip it it's really easy to work with Deal. One goes on the top, the other one goes on the bottom, and these are so we can attach the PVC pipe. The PVC pipe will just go right in. And when you put the PVC pipe in, I recommend using PVC glue just so there's a tight seal and they don't pop out for whatever reason, or water doesn't leak out of them when it's in use. I'm going to cut the PVC pipe because this is going to be the freshwater intake pole. You don't need much piping for this. I'm going to cut it really short just to save materials. Great. You want the bottom of this to be angled. So you'll see me cutting the angle in a bit, but you also want to take into consideration um, the PVC pipe not going to the bottom of the bin because you don't want to collect all the sediment if there is any in the bin. So it should be a half inch from the bottom, which is where it is now. And I'm just going to kind of measure where it will be coming out of the lid. As 
long as it's at an angle, so you have a point, so you're not collecting all the sediment at the bottom. So this PVC pipe that we cut earlier at an angle will go into the bottom here. Like I said, use some glue in there when you're actually doing your install. Make sure everything is really tight. And then it'll go like this. And just make sure that it doesn't go to the bottom. You can kind of push on it to feel. This male adapter goes into the elbow here so the hose can attach. So we're gonna have an elbow come out like this. Just attach it again. Use glue. I recommend using glue. trace the outline of the dishpan on the lid here. Once we have that outlined, we'll use it to cut a hole that we can then drop the dishpan into. The lip of the dishpan will prevent it from falling through and provide stability. When cutting the hole for the dishpan, it's best to cut on the inside of the line you drew. Doing it this way and cutting small amounts of material away at a time will make it easier for you to get the right fit. Using a Dremel tool with a plastic cutting disc is definitely faster, but if you don't have access to one, a handsaw will work just fine. Similar to how we cut a hole for the dishpan to fit into, we also need to cut a hole in the dishpan for the drain to fit inside of. Just like before, we are going to trace the outline of the drain on the underside of the dishpan and then use that outline as a guide for the hole we are going to cut. Make sure that you unscrew the drain and trace the outline of the portion that will be going through the dishpan. There are a few options for cutting the drain hole. If you have a hole saw the same size as your drain fitting, that would be ideal. We had a smaller one, so I'm cutting the hole along the edge of my outline and then finishing it off with a handsaw. Sandpaper or a file can be used to clean up the cuts. To install the drain, unscrew the two components, making sure you have a gasket on each side. Push the threaded side through the inside of your dishpan and try to get the drain as flush against the bottom as possible before screwing the lower portion of the drain back on. This will serve as the sink basin for the hand washing station. Attach a 90 degree ABS elbow to the bottom of the drain. The purpose is mostly to prevent users from seeing directly into the gray water bin. For now, a dry fitting will suffice, but when you are gluing everything together, make sure to affix this to the drain with some ABS cement as well. With the sink fully installed, we can now decide where we want the faucet to be placed. The most important thing is to make sure you have enough space between the basin and the edge of the bin for the bulkhead union washer fitting to sit unobstructed. Once you've marked that space out, you can go ahead and drill the hole with a half inch hole saw. Once that is done, you can install the bulkhead union washer fitting just as before. Make sure there is a gasket on each side and that you screw the fitting in as tightly as possible. We are also going to attach two one half inch by three quarter inch male reducer adapters to either side of the bulkhead fitting. With the male reducer adapters screwed in, we can now begin construction of our faucet. The first thing we want to do is decide how tall it's going to be. Simply place your PVC pipe into the joint of the male reducer adapter and cut it at your desired height. Make sure it's tall enough so that people don't need to bend over or put their hands into the sink basin when washing. Once the cut has been made, place a 90 degree PVC elbow on the top of your PVC pipe and repeat this process to determine the depth of the faucet. Again, it's important to consider here how far someone using the sink would need to reach over before making your cut. Finally, attach one last 90 degree PVC elbow to the horizontal PVC pipe and then the dry fitting of your faucet will be complete. So now that 
the sink and the faucet are installed, we're going to work on the inside plumbing of the unit. And this is so the water can ultimately be pumped from the clean water bin through the foot pump into PVC piping that's gonna come out of the front of this unit and then furthermore come up and out of the faucet into the sink. So the first thing that I am going to do is measure the sink and drains entire depth or height because we need to make sure that the piping coming out of the faucet and ultimately out of the unit isn't interfering with the drain or the sink or any of those mechanisms. So this looks about 13 inches, but just to be sure, I'm gonna measure down into the bin 15 inches. Again, I don't want the PVC pipe coming from the faucet into the unit is hitting the drain or the, the basin at all. And I recommend taking the lid off just so you get a true measurement. So 15 inches down. I'm just gonna put a little mark there. Now that we have measured how far down the bulkhead union fitting needs to be placed and put a marker there, I'm going to drill the hole for it. And this is so the PVC pipe can go through the unit with a secure bulkhead union fitting so there's no leaking and go to the foot pump. When you do this, I would highly recommend flipping the bin on its side and putting one of your feet in it so that you have stability when you're drilling the hole. And my marker's here. I want the hole to be centered so it looks good, so I'm just going to eyeball that at that marker. Now that we have the hole drilled for the bulkhead union fitting, I'm going to install it. I'm also going to install the male adapters and they go into either side of the bulkhead union fitting so the PVC pipe can connect to it. There's two washers on the bulkhead union fitting, so make sure you have one on either side. I have one in the inside already, um, and here's the second one. So just make sure you have both washers placed properly. You might need to hold both sides so it, it's tight. Now that that's tight and installed, I have two male adapters. One goes here, and again, this is so the PVC pipe can connect to the unit. One there, one on the inside. Make sure they're tight. Here we are. Now that we've installed the bulkhead union fitting into the unit, we're going to measure the PVC pipe that's going to come out of the faucet, drop down into the unit, and ultimately connect to a 90 degree elbow, more PVC pipe, and the check valve, which prevents backflow of water in the unit. So before I cut the PVC pipe, like I said, we're gonna measure, and I would take the lid off just so you get true measurements. Start at the top of the bin and go down, and I would measure all the way into the middle of the male adapter so that you can get a true measurement on where to cut the PVC pipe. This one looks about 16 and a quarter. So I will measure the PVC pipe 16 and a quarter and cut it at that length. Great, and now you can cut. So like I said, this piece is going to connect and come out of the bottom of your faucet. So it goes into the male adapter, into the bulkhead union fitting. Like this. So that drops down. Like I said, we're going to connect an elbow to that piece so that you have another piece of PVC pipe coming out that includes the installment of the check valve, which like I said, prevents backflow in the unit. This goes here. Forget to use glue when you connect these for the final run. We're going to start to work on the horizontal aspect of this unit so the PVC pipe can ultimately come out of here. And we're also going to install the check valve um, for 
prevention of backflow with the water. So the first thing I would start with, tilt this to the side, is I would start with cutting a two to three inch piece of PVC pipe to connect to the 90 degree elbow. And the size of this doesn't matter too much. I did a few inches because you're just gonna put the check valve on here. Again, always use glue on the final run. The check valve goes here to prevent backflow of the unit. And I'm doing this first because now I can measure how far it is from the check valve here all the way until your other male adapter that ultimately comes out of the basin. We're going to measure the distance between the check valve and your other male adapter so that we can cut the PVC pipe at that length. And I'm cutting down so the PVC pipe goes into the unit because sometimes it flies away. Now that we've cut the PVC pipe the correct length from the check valve to the male adapter, I'm going to install it. And just a reminder to use glue when you're doing this for the final run. There we go. That's how it should look. Just to explain how this is going to work, the water is going to come from here, which will ultimately come from the clean water bin. It'll go through, up, and out the faucet into the basin that should be here. Now we'll install the last portion of the plumbing of the gray water bin. I have a pre-cut piece of PVC pipe here that will go into the male adapter. You can make this bigger. Uh, this is probably as small as I would make it because it needs to securely fit inside the male adapter as well as into the 90 degree elbow. So you just put that in there. And I have attached here a male pipe adapter that screws in to your 90 degree elbow. And you're gonna wanna use plumbing tape on this part too, just to create an even tighter seal. And you'll attach the elbow as so. The hose or the tubing is going to connect here and go to the foot pump, which will also lead to the clean water bin. installing this 
while you're in your safe space working on the units. And then when you deploy the unit, depending on the site, you can cut the hose down, the tubing down, um, secure the pump to something. It has four holes here where you can screw it in and kind of secure it so that it's more sturdy. I definitely wouldn't leave it at a site like this because there's a lot of extra and you don't want anybody to trip and fall. Um, it's clear, people might be using these at night, so you just want to be careful and mindful. to install a soap dispenser. There's numerous accessories you can add to your hand washing stations like a paper towel holder or maybe a hand sanitizing dispenser. But today we're just doing a soap dispenser and I will be using an electrical box. This is four inch by four inch. It comes with a lid and some screws to secure everything. And I'll be filling it with right to shower soap. And then we're actually gonna use this same nozzle, which is here, to insert into the lid and then secure it all in place. So hole for the pump to go through, just as so, and we're going to use some super strong adhesive to secure the pump in the lid like that. Now I'll apply the adhesive so that this dispenser or pump will stay secured onto this lid because right now it's moving around. up with soap. Like I said, they're filled with right to shower soap. One is filled with thinity, the other is filled with strength. And now I will attach the lid. There's four screws, one in each corner. It also comes with this foam piece. Me personally, I would rather attach it to the lid before securing it compared to putting it on here. But do what feels right to you. Now that we've filled the soap dispenser, we've glued the dispensing pump on as well as the lid. We're going to attach the soap dispenser itself to the lid of the bin. So I'll start by marking through these holes where we should drill. Put this to the side. Now I'm going to pre-drill the pilot hole for the quarter inch bolt. to place the bolts through the surface mounts and the holes that we just drilled in the lid. And then attach the nuts on the underside of the lid. You'll need to tighten the nut with a ratchet while holding the bolt with a wrench. Now 
that everything's tightened, we can replace the lid. And your soap dispenser is ready to go. PTFE tape. You'll use this on any part of the units that have threads screwing into another part. So for example, you'll use the PTFE tape here before screwing it into the 90 degree elbow. I also have a regular clear PVC cement. This will go for any part of each unit that slides into each other. For example, we have PVC going into a 90 degree elbow here. You would put the cement here or the glue there and then put the elbow on. Same thing with this part and this part, so on and so forth. If you're working with ABS, you need a different type of adhesive. This is medium black ABS cement. You don't need this unless you're working with ABS material, and we are with the drain. So the ABS cement will go around this part of the 90 degree elbow and into the drain. I'm gonna show you how to apply the clear PVC cement. Here I have the faucet that we had installed into the gray water unit. You're going to apply the, the PVC cement into any part of the unit that have, involves PVC sliding into this 90 degree slip joint. This is going to be multiple areas in both units that you'll do that. And when you're applying, you want to place the glue here all around the portion of the PVC pipe that's going to slide in. You also want to place the glue generously inside of the slip joint that you are putting the PVC pipe into. So I'm going to detach all of these. Be sure to wear gloves when you're work working with this material. It's really toxic. And you also want to be in an area that is well ventilated because the fumes are really strong. seeing how far the PVC pipe goes in to the slip joint, kind of gauge. This is the, the amount of PVC pipe that goes in. So this is the entire area that I will place glue. And again, you'll place the glue on, on the inside of the slip joint as well. The dry time for this cement is 15 minutes, but the cure time is two hours in temperatures over 60 degrees. So be very careful, keep that in mind. Let everything dry before you actually deploy your unit. You wanna make sure that everything is dry so nothing gets damaged, everything is leak proof and working properly. to apply the medium black ABS cement. Again, you only need this cement if you're working with ABS, and today we are for the drain. You'll place the cement all around the portion of the ABS pipe that's going into the drain, and then you'll also place cement on the inside of the drain where this will slide into. So you'll place the cement on the portion of the ABS pipe that's going inside of the drain. And this will drip, so just be careful. Slide it in securely. There we go, and make sure to let it sit and dry or cure as long as is needed. You don't want to use the units while this the cement's still wet. Now I'm going to show you how to apply the plumbing tape or PTFE tape. This will go onto any part of either unit that has threads. For example, this male adapter goes into the bulkhead union fitting. You are going to place the plumbing tape here. 
this male adapter goes into the elbow here so the hose can attach, you'll also place the tape around here. This tape is really easy to work with and is not very adhesive, but it sticks. So just wrap it around a few times until you feel like it's a sufficient amount to provide a tight seal. And when you feel confident, you can just rip it off. Kind of smooth everything down, make sure it's all stuck to each other. And put it in. And the purpose of this is to provide a tighter seal to prevent any potential leakage. between your hose and the male adapter, you want to use hose clamps. I have half inch tubing here, so I would advise maybe getting half inch to one and one quarter like I have. And again, this is just to ensure that there's a tight seal between the two and there's no water leaking when the water is being pumped. You can also do this with a manual tool, but it's much faster with the electric. There we are. As the gray water tank fills, the pressure on this connection will increase as well, so we want to make sure that there are no leaks for the lifetime of this unit. We didn't do it here, but we highly recommend using silicone caulking on both sides of both gaskets of the Bulkhead Union washer fitting. This will ensure a tight seal. on this journey to ensure hygiene as a right for all. If you have any questions or stories to share, contact us through lavamex.org or reach out to me directly at sam at lavamex.org. We would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm.